everybody, I'm Monica. And I'm Caitlin. And thanks for joining us here at Security Chat, a podcast where we talk about our childhood fears and some things that are still scaring us today. Today on Scaredy Chat, we have the amazing Josh Gondelman with us. He is a podcaster. His podcast is called Make My Day. He is a stand-up comedian. He is also a writer. He just released the book Nice Try, which is a series of very funny essays. And he is also a producer and writer on Jesus and Marrow on Showtime. But first, we have a brand new segment. It's called Who's That Boo? Very cute, very cute. And um, we are going to play a game with just me and Caitlin, where one of us is going to describe an actor who, it is a little known fact, got their start in horror. And the other one of us is going to try to guess who it is. Are you ready to play, Caitlin? I'm ready. All right. Here is the movie that was their first film tied with another film. The film. You you mean same year? Yes, they came out in the same year. Okay. So we don't know which one he filmed first. It's a boy, right? A boy. (laughs) A man? It's a boy. Yes, this is a (laughs) male. This is a a man actor. A man actor. Okay, cool. Man actor. I'll remember that. Yes. Okay, the movie is. Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, which is the fifth installment in the Halloween franchise. Okay, so I have not seen that one, I don't think. Yeah, me um, Probably on TV at some point, but definitely not enough to know who is in it. Yeah. I assume Michael, Michael Myers is in it, so. I think. Is it, is it Mike Myers, Austin Powers uh, superstar? No? <laughs> no? Star of Shrek? No? Okay. Okay, that was my guess, my only guess. Who is it? <laughs> Yeah, Mike okay, Myers what... and Michael Myers are two different people. Weird. So weird. Odd. So can I ask questions? Yeah. Okay. Um, are they in... So they're not in a lot of other horror movies. No. Okay. Are they... Are they very famous now? Yes. Very famous okay. now. Like everybody knows their name. Yes. Household name, I would dare to say. Okay, cool. Um. Okay. Are they commonly facial haired? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes he's got it, sometimes he doesn't. Okay, that's so that's very unhelpful. Um, I feel like these days he kind of usually does. I don't know. Are they like blonde or are they more brunette? Brunette. Okay. Okay. Um, um... Are they in any of the Fast and the Furious movies? Excellent question, because that would immediately tell you the answer, probably. But no, this person is not part of the Fast and Furious universe. Okay, I feel like this is also hard because there's a lot of people in these. Are they part of the Marvel universe in any way? Yes. Yes, Yes. he's part of the Marvel universe. Okay. Do Well, that's good. Okay, so... I don't know why I'm asking, like, I don't have enough questions. To, like, <laughs> we actually haven't established how many questions I get. But, okay. Um, do they have their own movie? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They are a Marvel character with their own movie. Probably more than one, I think, actually. Yeah, two, Chris- two movies. And he's brunette, so it's not Chris Pratt. It is not Chris Pratt. But doesn't Chris Pratt seem like... I guess Chris Pratt's kind of young. Doesn't he seem like he would be in, like... I don't, One know, of those he, movies. I don't know if he would star in a 90s horror movie. I don't think he's old enough. I actually have no idea. Wait, so is it old? Paul Rudd? Is it Paul Rudd? <gasps> it is Paul Rudd. Because he's ageless. That's how, like, he could actually be in a horror movie from the 90s. Yeah, because how so old is he? Mystery. He is 52. What? He literally, he looks, how old is Chris Pratt? He looks just as old as Chris Pratt. So, okay, yeah, he is 52. How old is Chris Pratt. Um, Chris Pratt is 42. Ten year difference. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Paul Rudd is very well preserved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's all He's that running. His, his from... laser treatments. <laughs> it's all that running for Michael Myers in that movie. Yeah. So that movie uh, came out the same year as Clueless. 
Oh, that makes sense. Yes. Amazing. I love Clueless. Obviously. Right, who but yeah. yeah, it's funny because like I think it's funny that this is the fifth installment in the Halloween franchise in the year 1995. Like it is so crazy. It's like you wouldn't think that those movies would have had five films by then. But it but did, the, it came yeah. out in the 70s. So Yeah. So if anybody it, says we're doing too many reboots, this is an example of we've been doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, those slasher movies, like, they've had, like, literally, like, nine in a fl- slasher franchise. Right. You know, it's kind of hard. You can't be, like, horror movies, oh, rebooting it? What? No. We no. always do that. We always do that. And, yeah, it was, like, his, his that and Clueless. And I guess, uh, unfortunately, Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers did not do well. It was panned. But Clueless became a classic. It's funny to me also um, how many actors get started in horror and you just don't really realize it because, you know, I I feel like specifically the horror genre is more open to unknowns. Yes, no, definitely. I think that the, one of the best things about horror is that you can take a, you can take a premise alone and make money from it because it's such a big premise and people just want to be scared. They don't want to be scared by like Ben Affleck necessarily. In fact, actually, I think if you have Ben Affleck in a horror movie, a lot of times, no, no shade to specifically Ben Affleck, but a lot of times like a big actor like that will take you out. You almost want someone who is a little bit less known because then an audience can see them and be like, oh, that's me. I could be that person. It's a little 100%. hard to be like, I could be Brad Pitt. Not that right. those people don't ever do horror movies, but if you ever realize, like, now that I'm thinking about it, so few major actors that I can remember have done, like, slasher movies. Unless you it know? was maybe their first one. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Unless it was, like, their first one, but, like, already established. No matter how big the movie is, very few. I actually think maybe the exception is, like, Chris Rock and Spiral. Yeah, I thought that was crazy that, like, he stepped... This is probably the first horror movie he's done that I can think of. Yeah, I can't think of... Unless he was in one, again, like, before he was famous, I can't think of one. Right. But I do think that that movie, as much as... I thought he was pretty good in it, it took me out of it. Because I was like, Chris Rock, you're funny. You're not spooky. Like, you're not... You're not murdery. Like, no, you're Chris (laughs) Rock. But he was, in fact, you know, murdery. He's probably trying really hard to get out of that uh, view. I guess. I mean, I don't know. I, he made like a billion dollars doing it. So, and he's good at it. Hey, not <laughs> so, bad. Yeah. But, yeah. But anyway, so we'll do this segment next week also with a new person. So this next time I'll try to like... I was going to say stump you. Yeah. Next time I'll try to <laughs> stump you with a, with a person. Yeah. I have a couple of ideas, but yeah. you probably know them. There's so. plenty of people that I would never have thought started in horror movies, but probably did. Yeah. I'm excited. Okay. Cool. 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 All right, this has can... been Who's That Boo? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Scaredy Chat. We are very excited today because we have an amazing comedian on our podcast. Josh Gondelman is here. He is the host of the Make My Day podcast and also the author of Nice Try, which is a series of essays. He is also a writer and co-executive producer on Jesus and Marrow on Showtime. Welcome, Josh. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited. I'm easily frightened. So like, we'll have a lot to talk about. <laughs> oh, good. So are, so are Caitlin and I. We're afraid oh, of good. everything. Exactly. Good, That's good, good. kind of the whole point. So Josh, thank you so much for being here. We got a little bit of your fear um, over email, but we'd love to just like hear of the thing that really scared you when you were a kid. Because I know that we have a million things that scare us now, but what was the yes. one thing, the one thing you wanted so, to talk to us yes. about? So you're I'm, like, I'm ruined. I'm an incredibly squeamish person for like an adult. Um, and and I was as a kid. And so the way that manifests is that like, I'm like, I've fainted in the past out of squeamishness, which is truly humiliating. Um, oh no. For, uh, yeah. So I, it's happened a couple of times, but the first time, like the first time it really manifested in this way, I was, um, in like fifth grade. So I was like 10, maybe 11 years old. And I'm a big fan of things that are like a little scary. 
that's my zone. A little like, ooh, like I like a movie where like a thing that scares me that I can handle. I, I, it, gore is like what does me in. Like like brutal violence and gore is what does me in. So like there are things that scare me that I can handle. Like a, a thing that is very terrifying to me is like any movie where like a person is living their life and like the people around them slowly are like, no, everything you know is wrong. You're you're losing your mind. None of this is. None of the things you're saying are real. And they've like conspired against him. That's always like very scary to me. But like that doesn't. That's not what I'm like. Uh, you know that doesn't um ruin my life. But so I I was a big fan of the Goosebumps books, which are like uh diet scary. You know, for when yes. you're a kid, they're I they're love like that term <laughs> thank diet you. scary. Great term. Yeah. Right. Because that's what it that's what it feels like. It's like it has all the trappings of something that's scary, but very rarely was it actually like real peril or or consequence, right? It's yeah. not like, and then the kids got, uh, got cut in half by a chainsaw. They just like it didn't go that far. So then I got into the Fear Street books, which were like for me as like a kid, because it was a pretty precocious reader, even though I was, uh, I, I, I have a very childlike constitution for scary stuff, but the Fear Street ones were like right up my alley. That was like the maximum of my child threshold for scary. But I tried to push my luck one time. My, my fifth grade class went to the local library and I found, and I could, you know, I'd read like at this point, I was reading some things at a kid level, but some things at an adult level. Like I was reading like John Grisham's books. Oh, we like got a, an advanced reader over here. So, yeah, I was my Normal whole book. aesthetic was like <laughs> my whole intellectual aesthetic was like Uncle on Vacation. <laughs> and so <laughs> airport I reading. Had this, I bought this at the airport. airport reading. Yes, exactly. Where it's like I showed up at the airport. I want to spend. $32 on a book and $7 on a bottle of water. And that's what that's that's what the zone I was in. So I noticed that R.L. Stein, who I, whose Goosebumps and Fear Street books I loved, had an adult horror book. Not adult like um like late night on Cinemax like sexy horror, but like <laughs> nope. horror so for grown-ups. <laughs> yes, horror for grown-ups. It's called Superstitious, I believe. Um or Superstition, but I think it was Superstitious. And there was like a kind of a black cat embossed on the cover and I was like, I bet this is scary as heck. This is what I'm I bet this cuz I can read grown-up books and I love R.L. Stein. This is the best of both worlds. So I I checked out the book from the library and went back to school and we started reading and I got eight pages in, maybe nine. And there was a very brutal murder that took <gasps> place. And I was like, whew, this is a lot. And I could feel like my forehead was getting clammy. And I was like, this is overwhelming to my senses. So I got up and I was like, I think I need to get a drink of water. And my teacher was like, that's fine. So I exit the room and thank goodness that that I got kind of as woozy as I did as quickly as I did, because what I meant to do was turn left towards the stairs that led to the water bubbler that, um, which is, that's very Massachusetts of me. The I was going to say that's like a really new England way to very say water fountain. Yeah. Yeah. I Where no are you from? Idea what you're talking about? I'm from Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, okay. It's it's Boston and and Milwaukee is the other place that says bubbler for a water fountain. Yeah, my weirdly. my boyfriends all their family they're from Wisconsin and some of them say bubbler. Some of them say bubbler. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird that it's those two places. But so I was looking for the bubbler, uh, the bubbler, and instead of turning left to go down the stairs, I kind of like got really lightheaded and I was about to, I basically collapsed. But before I fell over. I walked face first into, you know, the way that classrooms have like the little sliver of window on the door that's like as wide as a human face. Well, my human face directly into the window oh, of a no. classroom full of deaf students that that had um, that had a, they they kind of, they weren't affiliated with the school I went to, but they had this one classroom that they rented from this bigger school building. So I hit this classroom full of deaf students they were not I don't think aware but their teachers heard what happened and they came over and opened the door and looked and I was just like in a heap on the ground and was like hey really sorry about this this is <laughs> deeply embarrassing and so that was like that's like one of the scariest things that um that has ever happened to me because I almost just fell down the stairs in a pile, which would have been even worse. But 
I think like the kind of the combination of feeling scared and having this squeamishness. And then like, I think this also really feeds into my fear of uh, looking like a idiot and a loser oh, no. in public. It's like one fear leads to the other. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. And so that is a very formative experience for me. So you was, were like, um, whoa, I was just scared in a book and now I'm and now scared. I'm, yeah, <laughs> it, it is like truly, I think about it and I still, I think it's very funny now, just like face planting on the window and then having the teachers being like, are you, are you okay? And the students being like, we, we don't, we don't, we didn't hear that. Um, <laughs> but I now, and I, I, so I think that's funny now, but it also is like the echoes of that are like, if that happened to me now, I think I would be so embarrassed if I was like so lightheaded from just like a childlike squeamishness that I like walked into a door where something important was happening. I'd be like, mm, this is pretty bad. Like this is, it's funny objectively, but to me it is very painful. But it's still bad. Well, I would love to know like if you're able to, if you, one, if you remember, two, if you're able to go into it, what happened in this scene? Like, what did you read that you were like, oh wait, I'm actually can, not a grown can up. Can you share that without passing out? Because we do <laughs> yes. need you to continue the podcast, yes, unfortunately. Yes, yes. It'd be very funny if I fainted mid podcast. Um, <laughs> just to really prove a point. Exactly. Um, yes. It was like a woman was walking along the street and someone from the shadows murdered her. And I remember the description of the murder being like several things at once like it was like they cracked her neck and they cut her throat and they like you know all like several different violent acts that that came together as one thing and I think just like the vividness of the detail of this like violent assault was enough to like really shake me up I think that's the thing about yeah one one thing it's like okay do we need three different ways but <laughs> right right exactly do we need more women being murdered in a mm-hmm. very aggressive way like crazy way but also but I, yeah, yeah it's also like i feel like um anything that you read what you are imagining it looks like is a yes. billion times worse than it could ever really be Oh, yeah. I was picturing, I mean, I was like 10 years old. I was picturing like Mortal Kombat amounts of blood and just like an ear splitting bone crack. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was just like the the way it was written was so vivid. But I was imagining like, yeah, worse than than it could like just more gruesome than a human could visit onto another human. (laughs) Did you did you finish Superstitious? No. That's, of course not. I punted. There were other <laughs> books where I got deep in and then kind of muscled through. Like a big one was was Stephen King's It, which I it's like whatever twelve hundred pages, and I read so much of it and then got to a thing that was really disturbing to me, and and it wasn't the same kind of like visceral, uh, gruesome violence, but it was ju- it was I think there was like a kind of chilling description of like a uh, gleefully violent child, like a young teenager who would put, I think, I think I'm remembering this correctly, would put cats in like a refrigerator at the dump, like a refrigerator that the door would close and just leave the cats there to die. And I found that it it didn't make me similarly like woozy and and, um, disoriented, but I was like, that's so fucked up that I was like, I don't want to. And then this book is about like a clown that murdered children by dragging them through a, uh, a, a su- like a grate on a, you know what I mean? Like tore them apart. And I was like, well, that's pretty gross. But like this cat thing, that's too much. And so I stopped. I, I, t- I had taken that book out of the library and I didn't return it because I was like, if I return it, I'll never finish it. But I I let it sit for like three months in a room <laughs> that I like didn't go in. And my parents, I was like, I'm putting it there and I'll come back to it when I'm ready. And then I finally finally finished the book and it has a pretty bad ending but have you have you seen the friends episode where one first of all let me just say that refrigerator thing that's so fucked up i will never i actually forgot about that too you just described it now and now i I remember also like having to like pause there you know i can't anything with animals especially but like that i also have a big fear of suffocation many fears as we've said earlier on the podcast so that's really upsetting to me 
So I hate that, and I agree. But do you remember the episode of Friends? If you watched Friends, I know that, you know, Friends is my thing, and not everyone likes Friends as much as I do. I have a Friends quote for everything. But do you remember there's an episode where Joey is so afraid of The Shining that he puts it in the fridge? <laughs> And yes. he just like closes the door and he like never looks at it. And then they find yep. it in the in the refrigerator or the freezer. And that's all it reminds me of. Yeah. You couldn't go in the room because the book I, was in there. I would like I would give it a wide berth. <laughs> yeah, I think it that's like, fair. We that's went our separate up. ways. You so, should try okay. to finish superstitious now. Ooh, could I you? I, w- I don't I mean, honestly, my attention span for books has been so bad and there's so much in my to read pile that I feel like vanquishing a childhood fear I'm just like "Ah, that's just in me forever who cares yeah I think think you're (laughs) good I'll just stay busted (laughs) so if you so fear street was like your that was like your sweet spot for scary books so do you have any favorites were there any that were just like ooh, this is just scary enough for me like this is in the zone I don't remember. I don't remember the specifics of those because it was so long ago. But then as a teenager, I did get into Stephen King. And I remember the my favorite Stephen King. I, re- I thought um, I read a lot of Stephen King, but I read The Green Mile, which I remember as a book being like, oh, there are parts of this that are kind of like tense and chilling. But like mostly I was interested in it and, and I like kind of pushed my through it uh i found it compelling and then i read the two that the two that i thought fell apart at the end that i that i read and were like was really into for most of them was it which i thought was like scary um and and like fascinating and then um needful things i don't know that one but it has like a wolf or something on the cover am i crazy i don't remember the the basic plot is the devil opens like a kind of antique souvenir store in Maine and what he what what you buy there is like the thing that you you're like oh I've always wanted this or like this is what my life needs and then those objects kind of have this magical uh like almost biblical jealousy hold on people and it just like tears the social fabric of the town apart and like relationships deteriorate and people like attack each other and it's like such a fascinating premise that it's like it's um and, and like watching the town kind of like turn on each other is really interesting until they have to like i mean no I, I don't think it's a problem if I spoil the end of Needful Things, a book that was written 30-something years ago, I think. I think, I think um, you can go ahead. I think you're safe here. But, like, it's very similar. Monica, I saw you nodding when I was talking about the end of It being like, oh, so they there's, like, a they all have to gang bang. Stuff? Yeah, they all, they all have to have uh, sex with no. each other. And, and that's what destroys the ultimate evil. Needful Things is, like, literally, they, like, fight the devil by like harnessing the power of a rainbow or something. Like it's just some like magical <laughs> force fights, like destroys it. And it's like, come on, dude, you wrote like 700 pages and this is what we're doing oh, at the no. end. Look, Stephen King, uh, I I think great at what he does, obviously. But th- that, I, I, and I still think, I like am glad that I read these super long books. Like I got like 700 pages of like terror and enjoyment out of them. But like, I wish that that landing had been stuck a little more Um, because the rest of it is like, it's so like the, the scary stuff is like a metaphor for um, you like in, in it, it's like human fear. Right. And what we push down and like what we're scared of and in needful things, it's like the, the kind of like gross grotesque desires that we have and like letting that get the better of us. And like, and, and so the, the, the actual magic is like kind of a, metaphor for like just unlocking that terrible part of yourself and then for like the the ultimate victories over this evil to be like literal magic it's like come on that's not i thought this was about the human <laughs> yeah. condition not about like how to wave a wand and destroy satan right yeah. i thought it was gonna be we have to talk about our feelings not yeah our yeah, yeah 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 or like we have to like <laughs> obliterate ourselves to like destroy that kind of like disgusting desire that makes us hurt others but it's like no you gotta like kind of band together and do some kind of like group magic thing right right <laughs> like, exactly find the nearest <laughs> rainbow Put a yeah. mirror up to that rainbow. It's like okay, yeah, yeah. You, that's you it. Rub a, 
you rub a small orange bear's tummy and then it <laughs> shoots a yeah it's like a ca- very care bear stare yes. and um and so but those i remember those being very like kind of fascinating to me I, and, and i didn't finish um but i started it younger like this was like in the same kind of like superstitious years um i started and didn't finish the dead zone because there was an early scene, I think a very early scene of violence against a dog. Oh no, and I I'm just noticing was like a so pattern. Yeah. It's the yeah. animal which, violence. Mm. Which is weird because that's not a specific thing. I, thinking about it now, it is like a trend for me as a kid. But as an adult, I'm like, not, I'm not okay. I'm not like, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, okay, let's see what you're going to say. Let's kill But like, I, I watched, um, what's the name of the movie? Uh, the Lobster. Oh with, yeah, with oh. my with my wife, and that's a pretty messed up movie. But there's weird. like an animal violence scene yeah. that I think like really like it happens early on in the movie, and she was like, "Well, I cannot enjoy this movie at this point." And yeah. I also had trouble had problems with it, but and and felt kind of like on edge about it. But like I I got through that kind of like. Well, that was bad, but let's see what's next. And I think she was like, no, that's too much. It's a bridge too far. And then similarly, I just read a book where where a, a cat dies. And, uh, what and books are you reading? Not every this book was, has actually, this. Actually, shout out to you. I hope this isn't – I hope I didn't spoil this too much. But my oh, friend no. Rachel Yoder wrote a book called Night Bitch. And it Ooh. just came out. And it's, and it's about a, a woman who is uh, raising a toddler – and kind of feels like she's not very supported by her husband, especially by her community. And just like, she's like, everything is about the baby. And she just has kind of lost herself. And then she starts maybe turning into a, a dog at night. I love Oh, that. I love that. It kind of reminds it's very me of, cool. yeah, it reminds me of a, a, a movie that I really liked called, I think it actually is called Bitch, where it's like, oh, uh, yeah. And I love that kind of stuff. It's just and, so, and in the, in that movie, she turns from uh, a lover to a child to a mother to a sinner to a saint and doesn't feel ashamed. Right? Is that the plot? No, she doesn't feel ashamed. <laughs> no, she doesn't. Yeah, that's the whole that's the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. Trying to think. I'm very you... sorry. I deeply apologize. Oh, I wanted. I wanted to podcast, and this is like what I do. Halfway through the bit, I realized what was I happening. I never knew what was happening. Like, oh my god. <laughs> So, Josh, every episode we like to play a game with our guests. And the last, you know, dozen episodes or so, we have been playing Chill versus Chilling, which is where we ask you um, whether or not you would do something. If it's too scary, it's chilling. Mm-hmm. If you're go with it, you're ch- it's chill. This time, we're not playing that. We're not okay. doing that. So, we're not doing that. I'll this put it round, out of my head. <laughs> yeah, forget forget my forget detailed it. explanation of chill versus forget chilling. Forget everything you knew about chill versus chilling. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this time we want to play a game with you called Truth or Scare. Truth or Scare is basically we're going to ask you if you would rather sort of reveal something about yourself or do the stunt, dare, creepy thing that we are okay. going to ask of you. So the first one that we have is, would you rather blindly email your social security number to 20 random people in your email contacts that let's say like a computer can, you know, assess for you? Sure. Or would you rather take a bath in a vat of cockroaches? <laughs> I know it's it's hard actually, but. <laughs> Cockroach vat, I think. Really? No. Yeah, I think so. I think so. It's pretty because cool. th- it ends there. It ends right. there at Cockroach Bath, right? With the other thing, with the social security numbers, it's like maybe they all went to people where I can be like, I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. Please delete this. And maybe it <laughs> went to like someone who I don't really know that's just like, well, now and now it's just out there. Like, because now it's all part of their uh, informational security. And it's it's a night. And, and I would think about it. Truly forever. I get that. You're you're right, but I don't want to take the bath in the cockroaches yeah. either. Oh, so. I don't either. <laughs> this is not this is not my first choice for a, a genre of bath. <laughs> you're like, you also made me do this, so you're making me do this. <laughs> this is not my choice. I just wanted to intentionally voice my non-enthusiasm for cockroach bath. It was just an easy decision. 
It's not something you just casually do to unwind yeah. after work. Oh yeah. A roach bath? Classic. That's to me, that's a Tuesday night. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry I wrote that down. That was a good one. Okay, here's our next one. You can truth or scare. Send a scathing email detailing everything you hate about your boss or an authority type figure. Or spend one night alone in a haunted house. Ooh, okay. Um, so I would send that email to that person. You're Is going with the, the email. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm a- I'm asking oh, for yes. it. So you would it's like, like no. so type I'd be an like, email. here's everything I don't like about you. Send. Okay. And then the well, 30 do... second window for unsend passes. Right, 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 right. That's a good loophole to close. I respect yeah. that. <laughs> um, I think. I think. Oh, I like my bosses, but I'm sure I could pick some authority figure from my past. You know, yeah, someone who like any kind of like yeah. iteration of boss yep. that you would just like vent. I'm very conflict averse. Um, Same. But I think I think I would still pick the first one. I would still pick scathing email because I think I can find someone in my life history where there would where there could be consequences, right? Like not just somebody who like I would never ever see again, um, but somebody like that I have uh, done work with or for in the past that I could send a scathing email to. That like honestly probably good for me (laughs) to to practice that kind of thing. Healthy, yeah, it's actually healthier for you to send that email. So. There you go. And I'm and not like could... a big ghost believer, but I do feel like haunted house. Like my my wife and I have discussed like what what crimes would preclude us from like if we were trying to buy an apartment, what crimes would we tolerate and what crimes would we not? What Ooh, crimes would us. you yeah. tolerate? So <laughs> or like, not tolerate? I think I feel like uh, like sexual violence is off the table. <laughs> But okay, bad, just yeah, bad vibes all kind around. Of a, a, uh, like a, a murder over like a, a, a poker game gone wrong or like a, you know, some kind of like g- mob violence or whatever. I would be like, yeah, we can live there. <laughs> that would actually be kind of fun. That would be like a story. You could be like, there was a mob violence here. Mm-hmm. There was Al a mob Capone violence here. Was there was a mob here. violence. <laughs> Someone got caponed. <laughs> Over a poker game, no less. Crazy mm-hmm. stuff happens in my one. apartment. Yep. So fun. Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah. I honestly, as ugh, I'm, I'm going to be honest, the prices in LA are so insane that there's probably no crime that would be committed in a house that I was trying to buy, assuming that I could afford it anyway. Right, right, that's right. How you like, get haunted. you. Yeah. If it brought you into that price range, you're like, (laughs) yeah, you're like, I don't care how many children that guy ate. (laughs) (laughs) The murder price point. (laughs) Yeah. But what is my monthly mortgage, though, after that? Okay. Cool. 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 The murder discount. Amazing, I think. (laughs) Okay. So let's see. Our next one is so this is, you know, Confess your former feelings to the person you had a secret crush on in high school, assuming you had a secret crush on someone sure. in high school, which I feel like everyone did, but who knows? I'm sure or, I did. hold a tarantula for at least five minutes. Can be open palm. I'm going to go <laughs> the first one. Yeah, I probably fine. I thought this one was kinda easy. Sweet. You're gonna I feel like that's kind of sweet. That one's, yeah, that one's pretty easy. Because it's also like, I'm married now, and I don't think it would, like, I could you could write it in a way that you were like, hey, wasn't this wild? This is how I felt. So silly. Anyway, hope you and the kids are doing well, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and also, P.S., you helped me avoid holding a tarantula for any amount yeah, of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> I, I, so thank you for that. And then not ex- don't explain it. <laughs> explain nothing hope they listen yeah. to the podcast please rate mm-hmm. review and subscribe secret crush you do listen <laughs> to it so yeah we're gonna hold you to it obviously all of these yes. this is binding in california this it's is a verbal binding. agreement sure. I mean, yeah. Someone, yeah 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 our enforcer is going to show up and make sure that you actually do all yeah. of these tasks and <laughs> the enforcer is a ghost <laughs> <laughs> a ghost and of a mobster that died in your house so. al capone's ghost he works for us I have no idea how Al Capone died. I don't know. He's, he's, Syphilis, he's dead, I think. Right? Syphilis. Syphilis. Maybe yeah. I did know that. That sounds vaguely I think he familiar. Had horrible syphilis. Ooh, did he's it doing everyone. more than just more than mobbing? Okay, so here is our next one. This is our last okay. one. 
our last one. Tell a sweet old grandma that the cookies she baked were a little dry. Or ride a roller coaster at a questionable amusement park. First one. Really? <laughs> wow, do you hate grandmas? No, I just don't have any left. <laughs> Whose grandma are we talking about? <laughs> it's, not, it's not my grandma. It's not your yeah. grandma. Okay, to be fair, I did not say your grandma. I said yeah. a grandma. A sweet old grandma. A yeah. sweet old grandma. Yeah. I don't know why old is necessary. I guess a most sweet grandparents young, a hot are. young grandma. Uh-huh. A hot young grandma. I don't know. There are like hot young grandmas. Like Suzanne yeah. Summers looks great now. So, mm-hmm. you know, she's mm-hmm. a grandma. But I yeah. think I would, I think the, the way you, you weren't like, tell her cookies taste like shit. <laughs> you just said, tell them they're a little dry. And I think I can convey that with um with tact and uh, and poise. <laughs> That's true. And, and and like we were saying before, you know, she could learn to make a better cookie. Yes. Yeah. And it's and an actionable really it's actionable advice. Have yeah. you ever ridden a wooden questionable roller coaster? Because they hurt. So they're they're painful, painful and scary. I don't yeah. I don't care for it. Hershey Park. This is an yep. app. Wildcat. Hershey Park. Yes, the fucking Wildcat. Wildcat. Oh my god. Oh my god. The ro- the wooden roller coaster like at the back of the park. I hated that. Um, well, Josh, thank you so much for chatting with us today. Um, where can people find you? Tell us about your socials. Oh, sure. I'm at Josh Gondelman on Twitter and Instagram. Um, you can find my book, Nice Try. Uh, my podcast, Make My Day. It's a game show with one contestant who's guaranteed to win because no one's competing against them. And watch Jesus and Marrow on Showtime, uh, Thursdays and Sundays at 11. Yes, those are all very easy things to do. And Josh, you are hilarious and lovely. Thank and you. thank you for chatting with us about Fear Street and how R.L. Stein, maybe we shouldn't read his books meant for adults. Hey, not when you're me as a child, at least. <laughs> not when you're you as a child. Thank you so much for having me. This was such a pleasure. Yay! Thank you so much. Bye, Josh. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us here today on Scaredy Chat. We hope you were a little scared and maybe a little relieved about your fears. And if you're having fun listening to this podcast, please rate and review and subscribe so you never miss it and you're ready with us every week. And hey, make sure you follow us on social media. You can find us on Instagram at scaredychat underscore podcast. And maybe you have a fear and you're wondering if other people are afraid of it too? Well, we probably are, but you should email us your fears at story at scaredychatpod.com and maybe we'll talk about it on the show. Till next time, scaredy cats. Bye. Scaredy Chat was developed and hosted by Caitlin Riley and Monica Moore Suriyagi. Produced by Jeff Swimmer. Editing and sound design by Fitz Harris. Theme music by Eric Fashingbauer with samples by Jeff Zahn and Jack Lenz. And Gail Gilman is the executive producer. Scaredy Chat.